past 12 months, there's been some amazing stuff launched and it's been incredible the rate that new product is coming out. And it seems to me that brands are putting a lot of money into developing e-bikes, bringing out new concepts. And a lot of brands are really pushing the industry forward. The tide is rising, everything's getting better. If you think a few years ago, there was like one or two brands that had a solid product and everything else was quite crude. And now everything's kind of catching up and these brands are pumping out some fantastic stuff. And with that, I thought I'd share my top electric mountain bikes by category over the last year. Now, a lot of this is really subjective. It's just my own personal opinion, but I've been lucky enough to ride nearly all the electric mountain bikes that have been released over the past year. Not all of them, but most of the key players. So this is my top of 2021. So first up, we'll get started with the best e-bike motor system. Now to me, the motor system shouldn't dictate whether or not you choose a bike, but it is hugely influential in the purchase. Because let's be honest, we buy electric mountain bikes because they make going uphill way less boring. And really having a motor on an electric mountain bike is part of the core experience of e-biking, right? So it does really contribute to the way that the ride feels and the kind of experience that you get when you're riding electric mountain bikes. So of all the motors on the market, we're talking uh, the main players, so Bosch, Bros, Yamaha, Shimano, I've tried Bathang and a DIY motor as well. The Shimano EP8 RS that's used in the Orbea. The Marle SL motors that are used in the Superlights from Specialized. So the first award is best motor system. And the way I approach this is, if there was a bike that I could choose any motor system to go in it, much like you can with drivetrain or suspension, which one would I choose? So the first award, the best motor system, for 2021 goes to the Bosch Gen 4. This is such a little powerhouse. It's a very punchy feeling, quick to adapt to your torque and your motor input, but actually I think is the most powerful feeling out of all the main motor systems. It's 85 Newton meters, but I think it's got a much wider power band than say the Bros that's rated at 90 Newton meters. And actually what I really love about this motor system is it has got better since Bosch bought it out. It's had some software updates to give it some more torque. So it was 75 Newton meters of torque when it launched. Now it's 85 Newton meters. It's got this mode called EMTB mode that really does adapt the power band from real low and gives you right up to the full power output of the motor if you're putting enough pressure through the pedals. It's got a cool feature called extended boost, which basically means if you give it a bit of torque, a bit of power through the pedals to try and clear a rock, it will give you a bit of overrun through the motor to get you over rocks and roots. It's brilliant. And actually over the past couple of years, out of all the motors, it is the one that I've seen the most improvement from in terms of software and development. So I've got to give it to Bosch. That motor, Gen 4 motor, would be the motor system that I would choose if I could have the choice out of any motor on an e-bike system. And a side note, they've just updated it to the Bosch Smart System, which basically means it's now connected. There's a new app, a new, new battery, goes up to 750 watt hours. But essentially the motor performance is the same, but we'll get onto some more of the Bosch stuff a bit later on. Next up, best integrated system. If you think back to 2015, 2016, e-bikes were really ugly looking things. They look like you know, bikes that just had batteries and motors strapped on them, and that's essentially what they were. But over the years, the manufacturers have refined and developed the integration, the user experience, and the look of the electric mountain bikes. And I've got to say, this has been led by Specialized and their integrated systems. Back in 2017, they bought out the Gen 1 Levo, and the Gen 2 Levo, and then more recently, the Gen 3 Levo. And I think that they have really pushed the industry forward to think a bit different to systems and integrations. And if you look at the newest Levos, you can see how far they've come. Now we've got things like integrated displays on the top tube. And for me, the integrated system means the whole electronics package from the speed sensor on the rear wheel, to the battery, how it mounts into the frame, to the controller, to the display, to the user experience, to the app, all of that together to me means integrated system. And whilst many manufacturers are getting closer, I don't think anyone has nailed it quite as well as an entire package as Specialized have. So my second award for best integrated system goes to the Specialized Turbo. Now this is in the Gen 3 Levo, it's also in the Canevo from the controller ergonomics 
the small discrete screen, the software, the way you can change the display, all of that talks to each other really well. And as an end user, it just disappears into the background. You don't have to think about it and it just works. So yeah, well done Specialized. I think that that brand are really bringing the industry forward and other brands really should be looking at that as the benchmark as the gold standard in system integration. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't really make much difference to the way the bike rides, but I really appreciate good design, good software, good user experience, and to me, Specialized have nailed all of those. So great job. Okay, next up, let's get to the actual electric bikes. This next award is the best handling e-bike. So the way that the bike feels when you're riding it on a trail, which one do I think handles and feels and gives the rider the best possible experience out of everything on the market? Now, this is actually really difficult because e-biking is really about going up as well as going down. But this bike hasn't got the most powerful motor system in outright brute force. But the way that it uses the power and the frame design and the frame kinematics just mean it works really well. And when you're riding along a trail and you're going down, it just feels just outstanding. So my best handling e-bike of 2021 award goes to the Yeti 160E. Now every bike that I've ridden since this one, I've thought back to how this felt when I was riding it. And I've tried to almost replicate the feel it's impossible because of the suspension linkage and the design of this bike makes it what it is. But as soon as this one was on a trail and going downhill, it felt so composed, bottomless in terms of the suspension. The feel, the grip and the feedback that I got through the chassis, through the tires just was incredible. And I just think that they've done an outstanding job packaging all of this. And no doubt if you read the comments to some of the videos, people kind of look at it and think based on the price, it's you know, it's, it's nothing special, but it's not until you ride it that it all kind of clicks and falls together. And for me, it just felt like such a sweet package to ride that it's really difficult to beat. It's crazy expensive, it's five figures plus. And when you look at it on stats versus other bikes, you would kind of think it doesn't really excel in any area, but it's not until you ride it that you realize how well a package it is. So Yeti have smashed it. They've really knocked it out of the park on this 160E and for me, that takes the award for the best handling electric mountain bike of 2021. Now, there's a couple of notable mentions that I want to add to that best handling e-bike award. Although they didn't quite get to that standard of the Yeti, the Nuke Proof Megawatt is another outstanding handling e-bike. The Trek Rail, just so, so good and so capable with the 2929. And the Specialized Turbo Levo, they're all really high up there. Just maybe if the Yeti is 10 out of 10, these are 9.5 out of 10s, but the Yeti just pipped them to the post for me. Now, next up, best value electric mountain bike. Value means a different thing to different people. Some people may see value as in the experience that it gives them or how much bike do you actually get for your cash or do you get great dealer support and backup or do you just want the cheapest direct consumer bike that's gonna get you out on the trail? So. Again, it's, it's subjective. So I try to blend all of that together to find the best value electric mountain bike for 2021. And that award goes to Nukeproof Megawatt. Not only is the Nukeproof Megawatt an outstanding handling bike, mullet comes with a Shimano EP8, comes with a 630 watt hour battery, is priced at 6999 for the top model, which comes with an outstanding specification, including Fox factory, uh, suspension, mullet wheel set, but it is actually available from dealers. So it's not just direct from Chain Reaction Cycles. So you can get these from dealers with full dealer support, full dealer backup. Now the range actually starts at 4999. The mid model is 5999 and the top end model is 6999. So you don't need to spend a crazy amount like nearly 10 grand, 10,000 pounds plus to get an outstanding, superb, capable electric mountain bike. So the Nukeproof Megawatt, long travel, 174, 160 rear, absolutely superb bang for the buck, gets my best value award for 2021. Now there's a couple of notable mentions that came really close for the bang for buck and the ride that they give you. And that was the Marin Alpine Trail, both the E1 and E2, fantastic bikes. And also really close was the High Bike All Mountain. This was a fantastic performer, an outstanding spec and really great value for money with full dealer backup as well. Now the next award goes to the most improved e-bike or the one that surprised me the most. The one that kind of caught me a little bit off guard and then I thought, 
when I saw it, damn, that's, that's really good. Not only is it a great price, the geometry is fantastic. They thought about things like the battery, the integration. And I think that this for 2022 could be a contender for bike of the year for next year. Now my full review is coming out on it really soon, but my initial rides are super impressive. So for me, the most improved e-bike for 2021 goes to the Giant Rain. Now this is a bike that's got outstanding geometry, fully enduro ready, fantastic price, big battery, new motor, good design, good integration, like ergonomically looks fantastic, no clutter. And actually for the price, you're getting a hell of a lot of bike for the money. So for the most improved, that for me for 2021 goes to the brand new Giant Rain E+. So the next award is called the Flat Battery Award. And it's almost the opposite of most improved or most surprising because there was so much potential with this product. There was so much that the company could have done to bring out something that was just great, but they didn't. And it's kind of frustrating and disappointing for me because I do appreciate good design and yeah, this just did not do it for me at all. So my flat battery of the year award goes to the new Bosch smart controller. I've used this for 437 kilometers now and I still cannot get used to it. The reason that this gets the flat battery award is, and I'm sorry Bosch because the motor and the package is fantastic, but this just does not do it for me. It is so easy to mispress. There's zero feedback that comes through it when you're on an electric bike and you're charging through the woods and you're trying to press buttons and you don't know if you've pressed it, if you've turned it off, if you put it into the wrong mode all of which I've done multiple times and I've given it a chance and I just cannot get used to it and I will tolerate it because it's on the best e-bike motor system. My flat battery award goes to the Bosch Smart controller, all new for 2021, but hopefully Bosch, please make an ergonomic version for electric mountain bikers. Don't let it stop you buying an e-bike with that system on because I've just bought an e-bike with this system on, so it doesn't stop me from doing it, but it should be better than what it is. Okay, we're getting to the business end. We're gonna get into the best electric mountain bikes for 2021. The systems that you should go out and buy, the best of the best, the cutting edge from e-bike, the creme de la creme. So let's start with the best Superlight system. I think in 2022, Superlights are gonna explode. There's gonna be so many more brands that release Superlight e-bikes, new motors coming out for sure and the market is going to be awash with loads of different brands and loads of options. Now I think Specialized really paved the way when they bought out the Superlight Levo and it got people thinking that actually yeah I, I get it I, I don't need all that power I just like going out for a ride and I like that natural ride experience. So Specialized really paved the way here and they were innovators at the time bringing this new bike out with a smaller battery lower powered motor. But then Orbea were like, I want a piece of that market. And they bought out the Rise, which took all of the great stuff about the super light platform and kind of made it all better. A little bit longer, had a bit more up-to-date geometry, but vitally it had a motor that was slightly heavier, but was way more powerful. So we had a sub 17 kilo on the lightest level electric bike with a 360 watt hour internal battery that could have a range extender with a motor that peaked at 60 newton meters versus the Levo, which was 35 newton meters. So my lightweight e-bike of the year for 2021 goes to the Orbea Rise. Fingers crossed we see the Rise platform expand next year. Yeah, well done Orbea. That's my lightweight e-bike of the year for 2021. Now an honorable mention must go to this bike here, the Specialized Kinevo SL. So it has the lightweight motor, the smaller battery, the same power that the Levo SL does in an outstanding package for suspension and kinematics. When you're going downhill on that thing, it handles so well. I took it up to Scotland and rode it in Torridon and some of the Scottish Highlands. And as soon as you go downhill, that just comes alive. And next up, the Design Award, the best looking electric mountain bike for 2021. Super subjective, I know, but for me, this is the best looking e-bike for 2021, the Yeti 160E. Lovely clean lines, great finesse about it. Well packaged suspension system, EP8 motor, beautiful carbon. I thought it looked incredible and again, subjective, but for me, the best looking e-bike 
for 2021 goes to the Yeti 160E. Okay, we're getting right down to the business end. The next award goes to the people's choice. What does that mean? Well, I ran some surveys on my YouTube channel and on Instagram with what people really wanted from an electric mountain bike. So how much did they wanna pay? What kind of travel did they want? What motor did they want? What battery did they want? Was dealer support important to them? There was about 10 to 12 different surveys that I put together. And in the end, the bike that ticked the majority of those boxes, so fulfilled the needs for the most amount of people was this bike, the 2021 Focus Jam Squared. Now, this actually came out late last year, but it is still a current bike. So the price is 5,000 pounds. It's 2929, has a Bosch generation four motor, 625 removable battery, aluminium, dealer backup. And all of those things combined just put together a great package. And one of the most important things is it rode really well and it had a great motor package. So the e-bike award for the people's choice for 2021 goes to Focus and the Jam Squared 6.9. Now, next up, this is the biggest award, the e-bike of the year. And it's been really difficult to whittle it down to even two e-bikes. But the winner of this is the bike that I think is pushing the rest of the industry forward and will ultimately benefit everybody. Because even if you don't like the bike or the brand, there is no doubt that this bike and this brand has made a difference to the whole of the industry. And for me, I think that is super important because everything gets better. The tide rises and the competition, you know, it's fierce and other brands look at it and think, how do we get better in that area? So for me, the e-bike of the year for 2021 goes to the Specialized Turbo Levo S-Works. Fantastic electronics package. Big removable 700 watt hour battery. Excellent mastermind TCU screen that's integrated and the user can customize the power or the pages on the display. A really ergonomic remote control. So the electronics package is outstanding, but the way the bike rides is also outstanding. It's a mullet. It's got adjustable geometry, not just on the rear, so you can adjust the bottom bracket height, but you can also adjust the headset. And there's three different position settings to make it a bit more nimble on the trails or turn it into a bit of a sled. And you know, if you go into the Alps, have a really stable downhill rocket. It's pretty much the lightest e-bike in its category with that kind of battery. Adjustable geometry, like fully adjustable geometry. And it's available in six different sizes. And all of that stuff, when you put it all together, specialized to pushing the whole e-bike industry forward. And as a result, we all benefit from it. Now there is a notable mention here, and it is the 2022 Trek Rail that comes with the Bosch Smart 750 system. Actually, for me, the 2929 rides a little bit better than the Levo. It rides a little bit quicker for me, but it's just not quite there with some of the integration pieces and it's not quite as refined. So whilst I think for me, the 2929 rides as a riding bike, just a little bit better than the Turbo Levo. Overall, the Levo is the winner of the e-bike for the year 2021. So thanks for watching. Now this is all subjective. These are all my thoughts and opinions and no doubt you will disagree with some of them, but let me know your comments down below. And by the way, next year, there is so many new bikes that I've got in the pipeline that I can't share with you just yet because they're just not announced, but there is so much cool stuff coming. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna be the first to see some of that stuff. And if you like the video, let me know with a thumbs up and I'll catch you all soon.